Oh, look, another flight review. Hey guys, welcome back to another Specic adventure. A month back, Tommy and I went to Europe for the first time and visited England and Ireland. Knowing that we'll be spending at a disadvantage when comparing USD with euros and sterling pounds, we looked into cheaper flight alternatives. Originally, we knew we wanted to visit a total of two European countries, England being one with the this second one flexible for change. During this time, SFO to Heathrow Direct was around $800 USD, a little more than what we wanted to pay. That's when we saw an Aer Lingus deal for SFO to Dublin round trip for $570. Then we bought a separate round trip ticket from Dublin to London for another $100. This totaled out to around $700 per person. There was a little bit of coordination and logistics trying to correctly plan how much time we will need to land, grab our check-in luggage, only to check back in the same luggage, and then proceed to board another plane, but nothing we couldn't manage. This, plus the extra plane ride and time spent on traveling might seem a bit excessive for some, but hey, I once walked six miles in Payless shoes until the back of my feet bled just to save 50 cents from taking the Muni, so I rest my case. When Tommy and I first saw this Aer Lingus deal, we thought it must be some sort of budget European airline, like Ryanair, but I guess it's not. Because I'm looking at their prices on Google Flights right now, and they're kinda pricey. So maybe we really just got a good deal after all? The other reason we thought it was a budget airline was because of the gate location. Remember our Zip Air review? When we took Zip Air to Tokyo, they boarded us at the domestic terminal even though it was an international flight. The same goes for Aer Lingus. We suspect it's probably more expensive to taxi, if that's the right term, in the international area as opposed to the domestic. So in order for budget airlines to save on cost, it makes sense that they would choose to inconvenience their customers so they can pass on the savings. When I put it like this, it sounds kind of bad, but honestly, if this is all it takes to save me a hundred bucks, I can bleed a little. My blood is cheap. A slight positive to this is the domestic terminal is actually the newer renovated side of SFO, so it's not too bad of a way to board. When it came to boarding, Aer Lingus boards by seat order from back to front not by some arbitrary check-in order, and this makes sense in terms of order and efficiency. Why would you board people any other way? Oh, I know why, because Murica. Aer Lingus has different baggage requirements for different types of flight, within Europe, regional, and transatlantic. Do not ask me what the difference is between within Europe and regional. I don't know. Since we are flying internationally from US to Europe, we fit into the transatlantic category. Transatlantic flights allow for two items per passenger with pretty standard size and weight restrictions. Tommy and I didn't have too much issues with carry-on baggage restrictions except for one of our duffel bags, which I will admit looked a tad too tall. The gate attendant gave it a quick look and let us through. I would suggest staying within the parameters set on the website to avoid hassle. Aer Lingus allows for one 50 pound free check-in bag for all fare types except the saver fare type. Check-in bags will be weighed by an attendant at SFO, but you will need to weigh and drop off the luggage yourself at Dublin Airport. They had this nifty little machine that made the baggage drop off and check-in super efficient. You weigh, you tag your luggage, and you send it through the conveyor. Then you move on to the next machine and you scan your passport and it'll spit out your boarding pass. And you're immediately through and at the TSA line. Every time I travel outside the US and I see this type of shit, I'm like, why are we not doing this too? Why do American airports take 30 minutes to check in and 30 minutes to get through TSA with an additional 15 minutes to go from check-in counter to the TSA line? No wonder our dads are dragging us to the airports half a day before departure. Don't get me wrong. Europe doesn't have good process everywhere. <coughs> Brit rail pass. <coughs> But some of these other things, like their airport check-in experience, we can definitely learn from. 
To read the details on bag allowance, go to Aer Lingus's official page. I'll link it in the description box below. The Aer Lingus plane, according to their website, is the Airbus A330. I was super feeling the color scheme. Like, yes, we are definitely headed to the land of the leprechauns. Tommy mentioned the seat feeling more narrow than usual, but upon checking the specs, they seem to match the average international economy seats. Maybe it's the armrests. They do feel a bit like they go in towards the seat rather than right beside the seat. Legroom feels pretty adequate, and what was really surprising was the amount of recline. Website mentions around 4 to 5 inches of recline, which is about 1 inch more than your regular economy seat. Super nice. That extra inch makes all the difference. I'm still talking about the seats here. The touchscreen display can be tilted to accommodate for the person reclining in the front. It also comes packed with a lot of recent movies. I found the way that they group movies like in the screen UI to really suck. It makes you think that there's less movies than there really are. So make sure to scroll all the way to the right to see all the movies they really have to offer. During the 10 plus hour flight, the flight attendant would come by the aisles every hour or so to offer snacks, water, and tea, so it didn't feel short of any service. The food was also pretty good for economy airplane food. They had the choice of beef, chicken, or vegetarian, but I did overhear the passenger next to me request for a vegetarian, and the flight attendants had already run out. So if you have diet restrictions, you might want to reach out and request from them ahead of time. Overall, it was a really good flight. The flight staff was pleasant, amenities were sufficient, and the recline actually feels like a recline. Aer Lingus is comparable to any other U.S. airline flying international, except for the additional positives of slightly better food and better seat reclinability. Without a cheaper price to match when compared only with United Airlines, I would still choose United because of the points since Tommy and I are Mileage Plus members. Aer Lingus does partner with Alaska Airlines, so if you're part of the Alaska Rewards Program, this might be a good option for you. Ireland's a beautiful place, especially when it comes to their natural wonders like Giant's Causeway and Cliffs of Mohair. Aer Lingus is a really good option to consider if you need a direct flight into Dublin Airport. This review is the beginning of our 2024 Europe travel series, so stay tuned for more Spikic Adventure. Until next time, see ya!